This next module is on classification. We've done many things to prepare the data, like scale it or cleanse the data, uh, even selecting which features we're going to use. And now we're finally to the point where we can do create a classification model and be able to cluster our data. So let's talk about the three types of classification, where uh, the first type is we're given labeled data. Maybe true, false, apples, oranges, dogs, cats, something like that. And it has the data that's distinguished. There are labels on each of these. And we are going to use the X and Y values to try to predict um, whether this is a false or whether this is a true or a 1 or a 0 or a dog or cat, apple or orange or something like that. And we want to be able to distinguish a new one. So let's say you get a new sample. You don't know what it is, but you get something that's right here. And you want to be able to use all of this data and this data to help you classify or predict what is that new data point going to be. Is it a true or false, a 1 or a 0? And so when we talk about classification, there are different methods like supervised learning. Supervised learning is where we have the labels. We know the answer on our training set. In unsupervised learning, it's a little bit different. We are given these data points, but they're all the same. In terms of the labels, there's no distinguishing them between true or false. And what you want the algorithm to do, the clustering algorithm in unsupervised learning, is to try to come up with a line between these. So if you had to do that, you might say, well, there's a little bit of a gap here, so I'm going to draw my line somewhere like that. OK, and then it maximizes the separation between these two different clusters. Uh, but it might give you a different answer there. And this one might be classified as a false, and that one would be classified as a true in unsupervised learning. You don't necessarily know the answer. It's just trying to cluster or classify these into different data sets. Now there's a third one that's kind of a hybrid between them, where maybe you know that a few of these are labeled. And that's called semi-supervised learning, where some of them have labels and some of them don't. And then it tries to figure out the rest of the clusters with this semi-supervised learning. So let's go through, and this is mostly just kind of a show you some code that works with many different types of classifiers, uh, just to give you an introduction. And one of the favorite ways to do that is just to recognize numbers. We're going to import a set just that comes from sklearn on 64 pixel images and we're going to train a classifier, in this case, a support vector classifier, or SVC. And there's our gamma value, and we split it into training and test, and then fit it. OK, now our SVC is trained. Now we want to evaluate this on some digits that we didn't use for the training. And so this is the outcome of that. So you can see the image here. This looks like a 3. And it predicted that it was a 3. And the actual, the label is that it was a 3. OK, this was 9. We got that correct. So let's just keep running this until it comes up with something that's not correct. OK, those are all correct again. And those are correct. And normally I can get an incorrect classification here, but it looks like it's doing a very good job. Run it a few more times. I hope I get an incorrect. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Oh, there we go. We got an incorrect. And this one, it predicted it. It was a 3. And it says that it was actually a 9. So I can see why it would say it was a 3. Um, it looks pretty pretty close to, uh, well, if I had to guess these, um, I would probably have said a 3 as well for this, just based on these pixels. But the label was a 9, so it was incorrectly classified. 
All right, so let's talk about supervised learning. That was an example of supervised learning. The numbers, uh, the images came with labeled numbers to tell what the correct answer was. And we you could use those both to uh, validate our model, but also to help train it. Okay, so I'm gonna run this with the moons. Okay, it's gonna generate a sample data set. You can either do circles or blobs. You can do any of these uh, that you like, and those will just be different shapes that you're going to, um, that you're gonna to try to classify. Okay, so here is logistic regression. There's a definition here with some advantages and disadvantages. And um, you, know, you can run these and just see how well it works. Anything that's in orange is misclassified. So it classified these as true, but they were actually false. Okay, and you can see the, um, the kind of the dividing line that it came up with between these. And you can see that these are just uh, then misclassified. Okay, so, um, Anyway, it's a very simple classifier. It's often used as an out output of a neural network to turn it into uh, in combinations with things like neural networks as well. Okay, so here's logistic regression. There are also other options that you can put in here to make it work a little bit better. There's also packages like Hyperopt that help you to automatically try all of these different options to come up with the best ones that do the best on the uh, test set. Okay, now you've Bayes method. Uh, this one's a very simple one, but it's often used um, in practice just because it's so fast and uses so little uh, memory. Okay, so things like spam filtering. Stochastic gradient descent. All right, um, and this one is about the same as the others, okay? And uh, K nearest neighbors. Okay, this one does a little better job. Um, this one uses more memory when it stores the classifier, uh, but um, it's, a, it's a very good one. Um, you can see that it didn't misclassify any of the data points. So it looks for the ones that are around it and then tries to decide, is this a true or false based on my neighbors, uh, K nearest neighbors around it. Okay, decision tree. Okay, simple to understand and visualize and uh, requires little data preparation. Again, that one does very well at the classification. Random forest, I'll let you read more about the advantages and disadvantages of each of them. A uh, little bit of misclassification right here. Okay, support vector classifier, we already saw that with the number classification. Again, that uh, does very well. Here's a neural network. Um, it's effective in nonlinear spaces, doesn't extrapolate well outside the training domain, and a little bit more about, uh, about neural networks. Okay, so um, there is the neural network. Again, try the other uh, types of data sets and see how well they fit. Now, unsupervised classification, we are not given the correct answer uh, when we're doing the training. It has to try to come up with it itself so you can see when we fit, we don't have the comma YA here. Okay, that one is taken away. Those are the labels. We just have the inputs. And so it's gonna try to distinguish these itself. And then I have this one, if most of them are, or a quarter of them are misclassified, it'll just switch the true or false, just because it doesn't know what's true or false. So it's just gonna swap the one or the zero. Okay, you have the Gaussian mixture model. Now, the unique thing about this is it also uh, tells you, um, you know, how certain it is about that classification. So it gives you more of a continuous prediction between zero and one. So you actually have to round it off if you want to get a yes or a no um, instead of a 0.6 or a 0.8, uh, how, how um, certain it is that it's part of that set. All right, and then there's others like spectral clustering. Uh, this one, you fit and predict. You don't separate those into two. The fit and predict are separate in all of the other algorithms. And you can see it does a fairly good job, a little bit of a misclassification right here. Okay, so let's do the TC Lab activity. This one is gonna take about 10 minutes to run. Um, 
with uh, one second data. Now, if you don't have a TC Lab, you can grab some that are the 60 minute or the 10 minute data set here, and there are the URLs to each of those. But because I do have one, I'm just going to generate some new data, and this one is going to turn the heater on or off at different intervals that you can see right here. And uh, what we're going to try to do is, is develop a classifier that tells us when the heater is on or off. So we're not, um, we're giving it that information for training, but then we want to develop a classifier that helps us be able to predict whether the heater's on or off. And you might use that in a situation, for example, if your um, heater uh, is broken and you're telling it to turn on, but it's actually off, then you can develop something like a classifier to tell you what it thinks it's doing based on the temperature versus what it you commanded it to do. Okay, um, so this is going to collect. It's going to take a little while, but let's go and work on the code down here below on the classification. So we want to add T2 as an input feature to the classifier to improve the classifier performance. And I've written all this code out for you. If you'd like to, I'd recommend just starting a new cell and try to build at least one classifier yourself, especially based on the code that we did in the prior module, module seven, on developing features. Okay, but if you wanna just add a new feature to this, the only thing that you really need to do is add um, T2 right here. Just add that into your feature set. And then that is going to build your X value, which is your input. These are your input features. And then the rest of it, I think it looks about uh, correct. I'm trying all these different classification methods on it um, to see which one is going to be the best at picking out when the heater is on or off. Okay, so you also have uh, supervised and then also some unsupervised learning modules as well. So it just combines everything into one. And uh, we're just going to see which ones perform the best at determining whether the heater is on or off. All right, and then we'll plot it. And uh, this is a little bit long. Um, you know, if you just want to run it yourself, that's great. Um, if you want to try to develop one of these yourself, um, go ahead and use my code as a template or start from scratch. I'll go ahead and pause it until the data is collected and then we'll run this classifier. The data is finished collecting here. We can see, um, you know, the, the heater turned on or off. And you can see it turned on or off uh, in these different segments and the temperatures. Okay, so uh, let's come down here and just run this. We're going to try to import this CSV file. If it isn't there, then it's going to go and load it from this URL. So I'm just going to run this, and it's going to do all of these classifiers, both supervised and unsupervised, on this. And let's just see how it does. Okay, so it's going to come up with a plot in the end. And you can see uh, this is the training set right here. So we use labeled data for the first ones up until k-means clustering. So this, this line right here is k-means, and then you have the Gaussian mixture and then spectral clustering. And there you can see the, all of the different um, classification methods that are supervised. So you can see that it uh, caught this one. This one is on. Um, here it's on. It missed some of this right here. OK, and um, you can also see, for example, logistic regression. This one just did maybe a little bit better than some of the other ones. So you can see it when it predicts that it's on or off. And the unsupervised uh, learning methods, they didn't necessarily pick it out. Um, the data is too homogenous. It's too clustered together. There's no clear separation between um, the on or off. And so it didn't do a very good job uh, classifying those. Okay, so uh, that's it. Uh, I've added, I've already added uh, temperature two to this. Um, you know, if you want to, you can try to take temperature two out and just see the performance of it. 
Okay, I'm going to run this again. It just takes a couple seconds uh, to run. And you can see that uh, temperature 2, um, you know, if it has uh, a benefit, it looks like it actually improved it a little bit more without uh, temperature 2. So um, anyway, there's the, there's the classification with the temperature control lab.